you might notice that I'm not in my normal office setup. I'm actually in a hotel room right now. I'm traveling, I'm on the road for a shoot. I'm actually in San Jose, California, but I still wanted to share my thoughts on the new SLR Magic anamorphic lenses that they got, that got announced at IBC. And SLR Magic announced these, and these are true anamorphic lenses. So this isn't like an adapter that goes on your regular DSLR lenses. This, these are true anamorphic lenses, very similar to cinema anamorphics that are very, very expensive. And what's cool about these is that SLR Magic has, uh, they've got a very decent history with anamorphic stuff. They've got the anamorphot uh, adapter that they've got out. They've got a 1.33 and a 2X version of that. They also came out with the rangefinder adapter so that you can use with other anamorphic lenses to where you only have to focus on that device itself. And so they've got a decent background in anamorphic type stuff, but not actual true anamorphic lenses. And I'm really glad to see these are, have been announced because they're pretty cheap. If you know anything about anamorphic lenses, you know that they're very, very expensive to the point where you can't even buy them. Most of the time it's not reasonable for a normal person to buy a, a cinema set of anamorphic lenses. These are actually 2500 a pop, which is also interesting because that's what the Rokinon Zine Cinema Primes, so non-anamorphic, but like high, you know, higher end cinema primes that Rokinon has come out with, those are also listed at 2500 which you can currently order now. The SLR Magic Anamorphic is not available for purchase yet, but they've announced it and they're showing it off. And so it's, it's kind of interesting. We've got the Cinema Primes, the Rokinon ones at 2500 much more affordable than a lot of other cinema glass out there. And now we've got these anamorphic cinema style lenses. They're actually three versions and I've got them right here in front of me. So they've got a 35 millimeter version, a 50 millimeter version, and a 70 millimeter version coming out. Now, there's no, there's nothing to say whether these are the only ones that'll be in the set. Maybe they'll add more down the road, maybe like a 24, maybe something a little longer, like a 135, 100, something like that. But right now they've announced a 35, a 50, and a 70. And these aren't the fastest lenses, but that's normal for anamorphic stuff. You're not going to be shooting at, you know, like 1.8 or even 1.4 or even f2. Uh, the 35 is listed as a T2.4, the 50 is a T2.8, and the 70 is a T stop of 4. And they even say that the recommended uh, shooting range for your aperture in this, uh, for these lenses is T4 to 5.6. So keep that in mind if you're a real fan of this shallow depth of field kind of look. Um, because the other thing that's good to note about these is that they are from Micro Four Thirds mount. So for use with Micro Four Thirds cameras, which, as you may know, have smaller sensors, so you're not going to have that super shallow depth of field like you get with a 5D or an A7S or something like that. It's a full frame camera. So what's really interesting to me, though, the most interesting part of this whole thing is that they actually list the image circle, the, the size of the area that the lens will cover. And for the 35, it covers a sensor size of micro four thirds, which is to be expected because it's a micro four third mount. But on the 50 and the 70, they say the image circle will actually cover Super 35. And as far as I'm aware, I don't believe there are any micro four third mount cameras that have Super 35 millimeter sensors. So that has me thinking, does SLR Magic know something that we don't? Now, there have been some loose rumors and speculations about Panasonic maybe doing a bigger sensor in the GH5 when that's announced. That would be, that would be something I'd love to see is a bigger sensor in the GH5. But could this be a, a slight clue? Because why would you make a lens with a micro four-third mount if it can cover a super 35 millimeter sensor? That's something more you'd think maybe like the Sony E-mount or Canon EF, Nikon mount perhaps. So. Who knows, maybe SLR Magic will have other mounts available. Right now they're only listing the Micro Four Third one. But I do think it's interesting, why would you make a, an anamorphic lens that can cover Super 35 and give it a Micro Four Third mount? Seems a little odd and a little strange to me. But hey, that's all just speculation. We, we can hope, right? Now, another thing to note about these lenses is that, the, that they are 2X uh, factor anamorphics. And that's really important because I, I used to be of the opinion that 1.33 was good enough for anamorphic in terms of the stretch factor. But that's because you're dealing with 16 by 9 footage in most DSLRs, right? And the 5D at the time was a really popular camera, the Mark II and then the Mark III, 16 by 9 only. And most common, uh, more affordable cameras anyway will shoot 16 by 9. It's really not until you get into the higher end cameras that you get to play around with aspect ratios a little bit more. But for a 2X anamorphic, you actually need to shoot 4 by 3 to get a, a nice proper aspect ratio of 2.66 to 1. 
And if you use a 2x anamorphic with 16 by 9 footage, well, you're going to get some footage that's really, really wide. And some people like it, but it's not personally for me. You wouldn't really see, uh, it's not a typical cinema movie standard, 2.66 or uh, 2.5, 2.4. Those are more common aspect ratios for movies, which is what most people want to do. They want to emulate movies. So the GH4, as far as I know, that's the only uh, 4x3 sensor that they've actually unlocked that feature so where you can shoot 4x3 and do an anamorphic mode. But because anamorphics were so expensive, like I haven't even been able to test this out. I looked at for rental shops locally who would like rent anamorphics. No one had them. And anyone outside of the state, it would be just a pain in the butt to get them shipped. And, and even then you're looking at sometimes in some cases thousands of dollars a day just to rent some of these lenses. So when we're looking at these anamorphic lenses at, for $2,500 a pop, that's an incredible deal. Very good value. And something I'm really eager to try out. These should be available for rent. I can't imagine why they wouldn't be. You know, something like lens rentals or borrow lenses or lens pro to go. Hopefully they'll get them. They've, they're already getting the Rokinon Zine lenses. So you could do that to test those out. And hopefully because these are only 2500 a pop, they should be pretty cheap to rent as well if you just want to try them out. Because I am very eager to try out that anamorphic mode on the GH4. I just haven't had a chance yet. And we'll see. Maybe the GH5 Maybe this will be a nice pairing with the GH5. It does have a super 35 mil, uh, millimeter sensor, and if it's also got, um, you know, the anamorphic mode that is currently on the GH4, I can't imagine they'd take that out. And it'll probably have Vlog L, which is now being rolled out for the GH4 as well. So it's looking like the GH4 is going to be a great camera for these lenses, and potentially whatever Panasonic has lined up next with the GH5 or something else they could be really cool for that as well. So I just wanted to share my thoughts and thought that was pretty interesting, especially the image circle thing, because I, I don't know of a micro four thirds camera that has a super 35 millimeter sensor. I could be wrong. Uh, let me know in the comments if I am, I'd be happy to correct myself. But uh, to my knowledge, there's not a popular camera with a micro four thirds mount that has a super 35 millimeter sensor. So I'd be curious if that does exist and hopefully maybe it will exist soon. I do need to make one correction. The 35 millimeter lens is actually the one that's listed at $2,500. The 50 and the 70 millimeter versions of these lenses are listed at $3,000. Current retail value is what they're they're saying. So I just want to make sure I made that clear that they're not all $2,500. I mean, the difference is $500. It's something, but uh, I was wrong. It happens.